Happy Christmas and welcome everyone to the very first video of Reality vs. Ragnarok, a brand new video series that your guy here, Griever, is starting to talk about the most beloved characters and all the combatants on both sides of humanity versus gods in Shimatsu no Valkyrie, the manga, Record of Ragnarok, of course, the translation. With the anime coming out and stuff, Shimatsu no Valkyrie is gaining huge popularity. That's certainly not a bad thing because it just means more content and more greatness that we get to all experience. So, I decided what better way to celebrate Christmas, why don't we start off with a brand new video series? And why don't we talk about the first, the first human, file number Zero, 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 I'm gonna miss a few, zero, 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 one, Adam. Why don't we talk about possibly the fan favorite character, one of, definitely, if not the favorite character in the whole manga, but one of them. Adam took us all by a storm in round two of Shimatsu no Valkyrie, right? He was there, he was fierce, he was combative, we thought that we actually stood a chance. Now, with this series, of course titled Reality vs. Ragnarok, we're going to be going through not only a character discussion of the Ragnarok interpretation of Adam, but before we get into that, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss the real life version of Adam, or at least the interpretation, because actually, ironically, to start off this series, the reality is there is no actual proof that Adam actually existed. Unlike all the other combatants on the humanity side, which have proof of life, proof of existence, just look it up on Wikipedia, you'll find these people, they did exist in real life. Of course, the Ragnarok version, Ragnarok version is exaggerated and we will get to those. However, with Adam, he's a bit of a special case. As Brunhild even says in the manga, he is the trump card. So, who is Adam? Well, pretty much if you've been living in any first world country or even third world country, I, most people I would garner have learned of the name Adam and Eve. At the very least, Adam, the first human. The human created by God in multiple religions, both Islamic, Christianity, multiple, that he is a big part of the current creation myth. You know, where we have... We are dealing with the Norse gods and the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods and Shimatsu no Valkyrie. Their time has sort of passed for how the world came to be, how humans came to be, how fire, water, etc. happens. We now have the current set of myths or legends, if you will, in the form of religions that state that Adam is the very first human who all humans descended from, and he is the one. Now, there is different interpretations of Adam, however. Right off the bat, we've already heard of Adam, right? You know, he's got the leaf, he, you know, he walks around the Garden of Eden, they eat the fruit, they're kicked out of heaven, yada, yada, yada. Pretty basic stuff most people know about. But why don't we delve into a couple of interesting details that while I was doing my own research, I didn't actually really know about. For one thing, the actual Bible does state in the actual Genesis that Adam is used as a noun, not so much to refer to a single man. At times it can refer to humans in general, mankind as a whole, or a male individual. Now I'm not gonna get into the details of this, you guys can go check out that information for yourself, but suffice it to say that Adam was used almost as a coined term, a way of referring to, you know, Adam of the world, while well, Adam would represent all of mankind as the first human, as the forefather, and ironically, in the Ragnarok uh, manga, that is a huge staple that I believe that the mangaka actually used to their benefit to take this meaning, but apply it to the characteristics of the individual known as Adam. Uh, also, the connection to the earth, which is a huge thing, uh, connection, not so much a connection to the earth, but almost a bit of a synonym with earth that Adam was created and this goes into more of the uh, tragedy of Lucifer uh, you know the morning star himself the great angel who fell and in some interpretations turned into what we know today to be Satan or the devil it is the fact that 
when God created Adam, and different creation myths will tell you different things. He, uh, God took uh, from the four corners of the world, he took a, you know, a handful of dirt or sand from, or clay from each corner of the world. Some say he took uh, a piece from every single section of the world. How you define a section, I don't know. Some say he just picked up a random piece of dirt. It, either way, he was created from clay, mud, and or dirt. And when this all went down, he was Adam. He was the envisionary. At the end of the day, all the religions basically state in one way or another, the god of their religion did create the first human who was Adam. Now, there are some obscure tellings that maybe Adam was more of a prophet or a Christ sort of figure, maybe more like an angel rather than a, an actual the first man. But most of those sources, I found very little uh, to talk about and very little evidence and very little uh, information and, uh, and any real books on it. So unfortunately, I can't really talk about that avenue. For the most part, the avenue is, is that uh, God created Adam and he did so out of the earth. Now, this sort of synonym with earth goes on to say that when God created Adam by molding him out of these things, after Adam failed him or ate of the tree, etc., etc., he was cursed to the earth as punishment for his disobedience. And now Adam and all of his descendants will be forever, forever cursed to die and return to the earth. A sort of idea that where we, a lot of us, all do the graveyard thing. We all do the cemeteries. We all do the funerals. Where we all, from earth we once came, and now earth we shall return. Sort of the poetic idea behind that. And in this context, I don't think this applies very much to the record of Ragnarok version, but it's an interesting take that Adam was a synonym more for the, an earthly presence, an earthly being who where he took all, where he made Adam from earth, it's where earth shall now take Adam and all of his descendants therein because as, as sort of a punishment for disobeying him after creating him and elevating him to the Garden of Eden and yada, yada, yada. So definitely an interesting take, but I, and I never heard it before until doing this video, but I feel like it's not as prudent as what's to come, which is, of course, the creation myth, which we already discussed. But then we go into the Hebrew Bible and we go into all of those things. And in the end of the day, both the Hebrew Bible and the Quran and some other different uh, writings all similarly say the same thing. They deviate in parts and certain specifications but at the end of the day, Adam and Eve were created, the serpent tempted them, and in one way or another, they both ate, they were both punished. Simple as that. That's the long and short of it. Regardless which religion you follow, what, what writing, what book you follow, that is essentially what happens. A few details, that's a very, very layman's terms of what happened. You know, there was Lilith involved, there was, uh, was Eve actually created from the rib was the whole punishment of childbirth because Adam was, you know, uh, God told Adam, you shouldn't have listened to your wife. And then there's versions where no, Eve didn't do any of that. There, there's different tellings and multiple interpretations depending on the writings you follow. But at the end of the day, it stands to reason that Adam and Eve were the first humans in the creation myth. They then had multiple children, which is all of us humanity. And that's pretty much all we know because of course he apparently lived in some tellings to be at least 900 plus 930 in some tellings 944 in others but suffice it to say adam of the biblical sense of the sense that we now know to be the interpretation in record of ragnarok was definitely uh i mean clearly they followed a very basic premise in record of ragnarok you can see the parallels to the character he was the first man. He had, uh, and also one big thing that I noted 
that I read a couple of times was that we all like to say a, a lot of the Christian belief and a lot of the Bible would, would lead you to believe that uh, we are the form of God, right? Uh, we took after the body of God. We are made in his image. Now, that is left up for a lot of interpretation because looking at the artistic representation in Ragnarok, we see that Adam is very, very pale skinned, almost like a silver gleam in the colored art, in the official colored art for Adam. And he has very platinum blonde hair, piercing eyes, very lean and muscular with no BMI on that guy whatsoever. And this leads me to believe that there was a that little line might have inspired the actual character design because not so much about all of humanity, which of course we all look different from each other, we're all individuals, having the image of God, I mean you could take the loose idea, okay, two hands, two legs, two feet and a heartbeat, you could take that interpretation or you could take the more literal one where it's that Adam was created in a very close resembled image to God who sh basically shined like a body of light almost. And that makes a lot of sense, especially even the gods were swayed in Ragnarok by his appearance, some of them referring to him as, as a cute mortal sort of idea. A lot of everyone was very swayed by Adam's appearance right out, out of the gate during round two. And so I like to believe that maybe some of this, of, of course, the manga of Shimatsu no Ra Valkyrie did so much research here, of course, right guys? I mean, we all know it, that there was so much thought and research and intellect put into these character designs, what way to take their myths, their legends, their exaggerations, their stories, their truths, and how to combine it all into one in one coherent, simple telling. And in Adam's case, I like to see that as I did more research, I could make a lot more small and minor dot connecting sort of interpretations. And I really enjoyed that. That being said, that's pretty much the reality stuff. This will probably be the shortest version of the reality because once again, there's not really a whole lot to go off of once you get past the Bible and the Quran. There's not really a whole lot left of telling of Adam because once again, was he even a historical person? We don't know. What we do know, however, is that we have the other side of that coin. We have the Adam that we know from Record of Ragnarok, a fan favorite. So why don't we get right into the other side of this discussion video and talk about the Adam from Record of Ragnarok. So what's the word that comes to mind when you first hear Adam? The name of Adam. Now, if it's anything less than badass, I don't know why you're watching this video. You guys all know it right off the bat. All of you who are watching know that this is the fangirl section of this video. Adam is my favorite human bar none. In the whole series, Adam is my favorite human bar none. There, there, there's just no question because Adam is the embodiment of just amazing. He was charismatic. He was intelligent, he was nonchalant, he had a, a swagger, a swagger, ladies and gentlemen. And not like the Pokemon swagger where you get a little confused in your attack boost. No, 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 no. He had the attack boost, no confusion necessary on Adam because he had eyes of the Lord. We'll get into eyes of the Lord here in a minute. But Adam himself, the interpretation here, now that we've went to the reality section, let's talk about a few things that are slightly different from the Adam we expected. Number one is the backstory. Out of all the interpretations that I read, and once again, I didn't want to make this like an hour long video, so I didn't go through every single one. However, we all know the story of Adam and Eve and the tree of knowledge, the tree of immortality, the, tree, the, the you know, the original sin, et cetera, et cetera. I have never, out of all my research, I never read an interpretation quite like this. And I'm not even talking about the court section of it, but, Adam's backstory, while sticking to the main ideas of the creation myths found in multiple religions of today, also took a little bit of poetic license with it, and I think for the better. What ended up actually truly happening 
was that Adam was, of course, with the animals and stuff. Another interpretation that I forgot to mention in the reality section was that in one version, I forget which religion or which writing told this, but at first Adam needed a companion. And so God basically hears all the mammals of the world, hears all the animals. But they weren't like Adam, so even though he named them all, Nah. And then we, you know, it, it wasn't the same. And that's when God decided to create woman. That was one telling and sort of fits with the interpretation here. I, I feel like the manga, once again, props there, did the same amount of research that I did, which of course is a couple of Google searches and a Wikipedia entry, but did the same amount of research that I did at the very bare minimum and found out and tried to interpret and uh, include as many different cool aspects of the character as they possibly could. One of them, when Adam first arrives on the scene, boom, basically Moses is, you know, the, the, the whole, the whole split the Red Sea because Noah's Ark is coming through. Here's all the animals. And that was Adam's introduction. I like to think that that was a slight call to that telling that before Eve, the animals were created after Adam to basically keep him company. Uh, and that just didn't work out so well. Uh, I don't really know why. I mean, seriously, if I had a pet lion, I mean, don't guys, don't tell my wife, but I'm pretty sure I'd be pretty happy for a long time. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Either way, uh, where I'm going with this section is that when we had the telling of Adam's backstory, after, of course, his introduction, we also got his backstory. We always get the backstory halfway through these fights. That's just the way, that's the format of Shamatsu no Valkyrie. Now, this version still tells of them taking of the fruit, but in a very, very different way. Adam still ate the fruit, but I never saw this coming. Because what ends up actually happening is this, the serpent, who I actually mistaken to be Lucifer, because a lot of tellings, once again, just like the Adam interpretations we just went through, a lot of the tellings of the serpent refer to the serpent as being the devil's uh, form or Lucifer, etc., etc., depending on what you believe. But in this telling and in Genesis, it's never truly stated that it was the devil. It was never actually the devil who was the serpent. So in Shimatsu no Valkyrie, they also take this. I mistakenly said, okay, that's the interpretation of this, but it's truly not. Go back and check those translations like I did. If you made that same mistake as I did, that's just the serpent. The serpent tried to sexually assault Eve in the garden. They were just chilling. Everything was grand. Eve did not eat of the fruit. The serpent presents a case that Eve ate the apple when it was actually the serpent. And it's so blatant that it's the, like the serpent teeth. Like they make it a point to say like he clearly, and like this is such a farce of a court case. And this is where Adam walks in, as we know, and just has a basket of the damn things and just, you know, and just walks on through, throwing them. So he did eat of the fruit. Eve never did, but he did once again do it to save Eve. And they were punished for this because Adam was so defiant and so blatant of these gods. I want to know who these gods are. That's a serious question. Not to get on another tangent, ladies and gentlemen, but who are all these gods? Despite all that, Adam here shows up looks like an absolute badass in this telling because that backstory totally shifted away from original sin, original this, original that. It still keeps with the the idea that, yes, Adam was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Yes, Adam did eat of the Tree of Knowledge. Yes, Adam did, you know, leave with Eve. He married Eve, X, Y, Z, Cain, Abel, Seth. It all happened. But... Maybe not as the Bible portrayed it. Maybe not as the way we understand it. And that has been a wonderful way that Jamatsu no Valkyrie has taken all the in weird sort of interpretations and ran with as much poetic license as possible while still keeping true to the facts. The facts of the character, the facts of the myths. But then wherever there's a gray area, it's... Let's run a marathon in poetic license direction. And that's not a bad thing, guys. This is a wonderful aspect of the writing of Shimatsu no Valkyrie. Because Adam's character here is just, with that backstory alone, is like, I see where they're going with this. And once again, Adam shows up with a barnyard full of animals 
and he kicks ass. He kicks ass. We aren't going to go on anything else other than Adam kicks ass. Zeus is so far the most impressive and strongest god we have seen in the series this far. That's just a fact. That is just a fact. That's not an opinion, guys. That's not headcanon. Zeus is the most powerful god we have seen in action, bar none. And Adam went toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. Adam went blow for blow with a Volan that to this day, I even looked up the Wikipedia entry, to this day, that thing had zero special abilities. We aren't going to go into my rant about that and why that's a terrible idea, but the point of fact is, is that Brunhild thought Adam was a trump card and was very distraught when Shiva was not the one to show up. And so far, looking at Shiva's current fight now in the manga, Adam would have it would have killed him before he did anything. This dance that he's doing and all that stuff, Adam would have killed him long before. But the thing is, is that Adam went up against Zeus. He went up against a top tier, one of the best. You can argue like I do that Odin might be in that same bracket, that same tier, yada, yada, yada. Either way, you can't deny Zeus is still the strongest god we've seen. And Adam kicks the living shit out of him. He makes him look like he's just fodder for the first couple of chapters it is glorious it's badass especially after we saw the sort of even keel blow for blow fight with thor and lu bu to come out of the gate with the zeus adam fight is what drew so many people in to this day most people even though the heracles and jack the ripper fight in round four was arguably the most emotional and most uh, investing fight in the series the adam versus zeus fight was so clean and solid that so many people still rank that as the number one fight. And I wouldn't I wouldn't exactly go to town and try to fight to the death if that isn't the case, right? Like, I love the Heracles versus Jack fight, but uh, Zeus versus Adam might still be. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted like everybody else. It, it, it depends on how I'm feeling that day. The, you know, what side of the bed did I get up on? So Adam's character here is just... Such a composed, amazing, and I told you guys that, the, you know, we already went through the reality section. So this is just all fan, you know, fanboying, fangirling, whatever you want to call it. And I just absolutely love Adam. All from his character design, you know, as I said, he comes out of the gate, he's got the platinum blonde hair, he's got the leaf and all that stuff. Very classic, very biblical. But also his demeanor. His demeanor is just what we needed to see in Adam, that sort of lazy look in his eye, the way the eyes are drawn, and ironically, given his ability, the eyes of the Lord, that he's got these very, you know, blasé, eh, half-closed eyes all the time, bright, blue, and pretty, but yeah, you're sort of, you know, you want me to, you know, get wide-eyed, you better do something actually impressive, sort of uh, attitude, the attitude of Adam. And then when we think he's this cocky little bastard, when you think, okay, maybe that's a little too much for some people, he turns around halfway through the fight, when the fight's going down, and the speeches he gives, they're only, they're only on the same level as Heracles in round four, because he just stands there, what? We all know, we all know it, ladies and gentlemen. We all know exactly what he says. He says, as Zeus, Ask him, what are you fighting for? Why do you fight so hard and such? What a stupid question. What parent wouldn't go all out and fight to the death for their children? Because to Adam, humanity, this nonchalant character that we thought didn't really care, he hadn't acknowledged Eve, he hadn't acknowledged the crowd, he hadn't acknowledged anything, really. Then he stands there and basically says, I love every single person in all. Every single person in all of humanity, in all of history, is my child. And that's why I'm here fighting, so they don't have to. It was glorious. How do you not love Adam, guys? How would you not feel for this guy? His demeanor is perfect. His lines are perfect. The dialogue is on point. And then, and then he's got the ability... Screw this Volan crap before they're all like, oh yeah, Volans have special abilities crap that they introduced, sort of like hockey in one piece later on when they went, yeah, no, I think we need to introduce more than, yeah, they can just hurt the gods uh, aspect that, that's what it was, sorry. But uh, no tangent there or anything. But 
when we have Adam with the eyes of the Lord, I mean, that ability. Granted, without Zeus going to town and realizing, okay, I got to do an endurance battle here because otherwise I'm going to lose to Adam. He had to break the eyes of the Lord. A, an ability gifted by the Christian God, which we have not seen yet. The biblical God, we have not seen him in Shemantan of Valkyrie. I imagine him and or Jesus Christ will eventually make an appearance, but maybe there's some issue with that because, once again, it's very easy to interpret uh, religions that are now considered mythology, but to then introduce religion as mythology... That steps on a lot of toes and a lot of people get very uppity uppity about that. So maybe that's part of the reason we haven't seen that yet. However, point is, is that Adam has this ability, the eyes of the Lord, and it is an incredible ability. He can just see every attack. It's basically observation hockey tuned up to the max. He sees every single ability. Right before you attack, he sees the entire attack, and then he does it before you do. It makes no sense. Zeus stopped time and moved, and Adam hit him first. It makes no sense, but I love it. The logic is gone. There are no physics to interpret. There's nothing to talk about here when it comes to applying real-world biology and physics. A lot of people like to do that when they power scale. Like, oh, well, he punched a brick wall with his fist only at this distance. Well, that was a roughly about a foot, and they try to calculate that shit to explain who's actually stronger. It's like, these are superpower people. Don't apply real-world physics to anime anymore. Please, guys, don't do that. That's, that it's never going to work because the manga can come and go, yeah, Screw real world physics. Forget gravity for a moment because I'm doing this. So applying that has never made any sense to me. And here we see Adam basically saying, screw the laws of the world. I'm just going to do whatever I want. And he does it. And it's amazing. But I also love the fact that he had limitations. His eyes were being stretched. As Brunhild pointed out before, before the whole blood got in the eyes thing, which made him blind so he could no longer use eyes of the Lord. Which once again, I'm like... Because without the blood in the eyes, Adam probably would have won. I, I'm, I'm confident in saying that. Adam likely would have won that fight. But here we do get is that Brunhild states that it is an, an crazy, even though Adam's the first human, an amazing superhuman pretty much. He's Captain America of humanity. But he's Superman. But he's still human. He might be created in the image of God. He might be, you know, the best human that God ever created. But at the end of the day, it's still using eyes of the Lord to do these God-like techniques and move at speeds faster than humans can. Is still straining his body and his muscle and his nervous system like crazy. It's at its limit every single time he uses that. And eyes of the Lord is also not an indefinite ability. It's eventually, it's not infinity. It's eventually going to run out. There is a limit. There is a stamina bar hidden somewhere for this ability. And unfortunately, we don't know fully what that might have been because, of course, the eyes of the Lord got blinded and stuff. But either way, Adam fought with this ability and without it to the very bitter end, to the point that in the end, Zeus was on his knees and Adam was still standing. Now, of course, Zeus was the victor by default, considering Adam had died. But even Zeus, who has a big hatred for humanity by, the, by all accounts, respected Adam by the end of that. And believe that Adam, that fight could have easily gone the other way. And that had it been a battle of endurance, Adam, Adam won the battle of endurance because Zeus could no longer stand up. And Adam, even in death, stood strong and tall with his fist raised. So that's basically Adam from Record of Ragnarok. And we see him later in the shrine that Brunhild goes to in later chapters. But I have no idea if Adam is ever going to return, if he's going to come back, if there's going to be... The, the end of the manga, this manga could go in any direction. I have no idea. I'm of the opinion that before Fight 13 happens, 
uh, even before fight 12 or 11 happens, these rounds are going to be interrupted. That Shimatsuno Valkyrie is going to do an arc that is going to go bypass these fights and into the background stories. But that's just me. Either way, will we see Adam again? I have no idea. If we see him, it'll likely only be in a, you know, background image or a flashback at the most. I doubt Adam's ever coming back to life. The stakes in Shimatsuno Valkyrie are raised. This is not a tip. This is not a shonen. This is not a week to week. You know, characters can always come back. There's always a healing. There's always a way. No, this is the game for keeps. And we've seen that in multiple characters' uh, reactions, the way they've handled the deaths, the way they've cried, the way they've gotten angry. This is for keeps. When a character dies in Shimatsu no Valkyrie, they're dead. Even one as great as Adam. So I think I covered most of what I wanted to talk about Adam here in this character discussion. But if you guys have anything that you think I missed or any single point you want to make, leave it down in the comment section down below. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. And I'm going to be doing this series for all the characters up to date. And if we still, if somehow I manage to get all these character discussion videos out before we get into more characters and I actually get caught up, unlikely to happen. But if I do, then we'll have to talk about predictions. We'll do reality versus predictions for Ragnarok. And we'll talk about different characters like Beelzebub and Apollo. Or maybe people that will even do characters that might have shown up. Like apparently Babe Ruth was going to be on humanity's side. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime. But I'd love to do these more Valkyrie uh, discussion type videos like this. And I'd like to get your guys' input on them. I would really appreciate it if you guys would tell me as much detail, what you liked about this video, what you disliked, and how I can maybe change it up for the next foreseeable videos to make this more fun for everybody to view and watch. If you guys could let me know down in the comments, I would really appreciate that. Happy and Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates it once again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, this video, I'm hoping I'll get this edited and out on Christmas Day, even if it's late at night, Christmas Day, my time. I'm hoping to get this out December 25th of 2020. So let's hope for that, and I hope that uh, my message of Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas all throughout the video uh, stays true for that. So either way, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a great year. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you like. And if this video got you into Shimatsu no Valkyrie, let me know that too. Because the anime's coming, the fights are getting good. Let's let's go. Let's see this happen. So either way, guys, if we don't see you again for any Shimatsu no Valkyrie content before the new year, happy new year. Let's leave 2020 in the dust. 2021 cup uh coming coming <laughs> 2021 is coming and uh it's it's really exciting so don't forget to drink responsibly as always ladies and gentlemen and i will see you guys with some more shimatsuno valkyrie content in the new year let's go merry christmas everyone